So <clears throat> I'm in the studio with lockpicks trying to get into the filing cabinet where I store some of my shit. I thought it would be fun for people to watch the side of my big dumb fucking face try to open this lock. I have a drill at the house. I could just drill the fucking lock open. Here it is. You can you can see it. So I was also thinking that these are burglary tools that I'm using here. And I'm not a bonded locksmith. Um so it kind of made me think that I should really change the license plate on the car that Stacy and I share because it's like five months expired Kentucky plates. It would really suck to be pulled over with expired plates that aren't in my name. And I don't have proof of insurance. I mean, we have insurance, but I just don't have it with me because I'm negligent and um, also have burglary tools with me. Although that wouldn't be the weirdest shit that I've done outside and nearly got caught doing. So, I guess it could be worse. It could be like the time I went to an abandoned factory and shot two of my friends half naked. That's, um, that's pretty cool. Or the time I went behind High Amp and, uh, we shot a full nude set there for Deviant Nation back when that was a thing. That was pretty fucked up. Yeah, so this isn't working very well. I'm not apparently James Bond, and I don't know how to pick locks. But I, I have I have the tools. You can see them. They're um. They're the most legit lock picks that I've ever owned. Not that I know anything about any of that. I've definitely spent my lunch times doing worse things. When I worked at the drunk tank one time, this guy came in and he got um he got the shit beat out of him. Uh, I think by the cops, or maybe he was just drunk. But he looked kind of like Harmar Superstar and Ron Jeremy, like had a drunker, more fucked up hillbilly kid. And um, uh, on lunch, um, you know, he came in and I had whatever kind of garbage that I'd brought from home. And um, his hair was super greasy and just disgusting. But he had this gash in his skull, like right here. And it was like gaping open. I'm surprised I couldn't see actual bone. It was fucked up. But um, he was like, what do I do? And I was like, fuck, man, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, clearly. Um, I work at a drunk tank. I'm not even a cop. <laughs> um, so I tried to use butterfly stitches. And that, you know, those little bandages didn't work. They just got stuck in his hair, and he looked like he had chewing gum wrappers in his bloody, greasy hair. So I guess either from the blood loss or the massive amount of booze he drank, he um, ended up leaving my office, and I had these surgical gloves on, like some kind of doctor, um, just blood all over me, <laughs> and um, stumbles down the hallway, and like I said, either through blood loss or intoxication, he um, got a little dizzy, got the spins, and he vomited up... Um, something that looked like old crow and like a pile of disgusting rags. He just puked all over the place. And um, I'd been hardened a little bit at that point, you know. I, I wasn't, you know, scared of a little bit of puke. <laughs> but he, uh, he apologized and eventually he just crawled into the bathroom and he passed out on the floor and I would take his vitals every couple, couple hours. I was responsible. He was, he was totally safe in my care. Um, <laughs> But we had this really weird powder that would um, kind of turn to this gel when you dropped it on a liquid. So if somebody pissed themselves or if they dropped a frosty can of Coke or something, you could easily sweep it up before you would mop. You know, you wouldn't spread all the shit around. But it had the unfortunate aroma of peppermint built into it. So I have this giant shaker can. looks like a can of Comet. And... Um, I'm shaking it out all over his old crow and dirty rags vomit. And um, as soon as that peppermint smell kind of 
came up, you know, mixed with all that, I, um, I nearly puked myself. Um, I only mention this because, again, I, uh, I've definitely had worse lunch breaks, but uh, this is pretty dispiriting. I don't want you guys to watch me cry, so I'm going to probably turn this off in a second, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good times. So that was a pick I was using. I might try before I leave this one, this pick right here. Or maybe I may get rowdy and use this one. Anyway, I was trying to think of some of the good drunk tank stories. Um, you know, we, we had to do something called uh, therapeutic restraints. I can't remember what, what they were called. Like the acronym was like TPR for a BRS. I don't know. It was fucked up. But we were all BRSs, behavioral rehabilitation specialists. And to, to be a behavioral rehabilitation specialist, you would spend less than 40 hours in training um, at Prest Air Center. So I don't know what kind of specialist I was, but I felt pretty special having a title and all. So anyway, when we were um, doing this training, they always said, well, you had to use two people to restrain anybody. And um, <laughs> The reality was, sometimes I was alone up there, and uh, if I wasn't alone, I was um, working with a 60-year-old um, grandmother. Uh, I mean, she was she was spry, you know. She would, yeah, you know, she was limber. Uh, yeah, I mean, she, she would do stretches. I didn't like fuck her or something. Um, but uh, you know, she wasn't going to help me take down some raging meth addict. This wasn't going to happen. So, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> there was this guy who came in, and he, he was kind of squirrely. He was unpredictable. I couldn't tell if he was on drugs or if he was just kind of crazy because that would happen too sometimes. Um, and he ended up, uh, he was using the water fountain, and he asked, he said, well, can, can I go get some cigarettes from my wife? And, you know, she brought some cigarettes. I went to open the door. He rushed past me. There were like four locked doors between him and his wife. I wasn't really worried about that. But he rushed past me, pushed me off balance. Kind of pissed me off. Um, but, you know, I, I just kind of trot after him because, you know, he's not going to get anywhere. But he's running full blast, like just as fast as he can, like a sprinter. It was beautiful. Um, he went from being like a momentarily intoxicated or maybe delusional, violent, um, you know, mental health uh, patient to just like a world-class athlete it was really a sight to behold but he ran as fast as he could and he just slammed right into this doorway that had like a crash bar on it so he thought he could get through it but uh he hit the crash bar nothing happened because it had the key and uh, he just rebounded right off of it right back into me and then i proceeded to uh just flatten him on the floor and um i was the only person therapeutically restraining him at that point and I felt bad because I'm um, a pretty big guy, and I wasn't really hurting him or anything, but I'm sure it was unpleasant having all 300 plus pounds of me writhing on top of him, trying to pry the uh, little uh, the little dial from our washing machine. He pulled that off, and he tried to make a little shank out of it. He was gonna stab his wife, you know, with this uh, washing machine handle. It was pretty fucked up. But he apologized for almost knocking me down later, and uh, he apologized for ruining the washing machine. We could only wash stuff on cold after that. It was a real bummer. But um, yeah, that was another pretty good lunch break, or work day, I guess. Yeah. So this isn't gonna happen. I don't think I can. Um, I don't think I can use these lock picks to open this. Um, I guess I'm going to drill it out after everybody goes home later. So, uh, fuck off, I'm done.